As the 1992 Summer Olympics approach, more than 300 world-class track and field athletes have gathered in San Jose, California for the Bruce Jenner Symantec Classics. Hello, I'm Craig Sager. Contrary to TAC and the U.S. court systems, the IAAF has ruled that one of those athletes, Butch Reynolds, is not allowed to compete. 185 nations comprise the IAAF, the International Amateur Athletic Federation, 17 more than the United Nations. Each country has its own governing body. The United States is called TAC, the Athletic Congress. The IAAF has said that Butch Reynolds violated its drug policy. TAC says Butch Reynolds is innocent. And the U.S. courts issued a temporary restraining order this week allowing Butch Reynolds to compete. However, the IAAF says that the U.S. court system has no jurisdiction over the IAAF. And the IAAF issued this emphatic notice to all athletes just before midnight last night. That if Butch Reynolds competes in this meet, any athlete that participates may jeopardize their eligibility for international competition, including the Olympics. And the meeting will not be recognized as a Grand Prix meeting. That means no prize money and no records will be recognized. Butch Reynolds is the world record holder in the men's 400 meters. And with an injunction from the federal court in Akron, Ohio in hand, stating that he should be given the opportunity to run, he has arrived at the track. And he is now with Craig Masbeck. Put you like a man on a yo-yo. You're eligible, you're ineligible, you get the TRO which says you can run. Now the IAAF says you can't go to the line. What are you going to do? No, Craig, all I want to do really is run. Uh, first, I had a good favor with the internet, with the uh, tech. I had a good favor with the United States courts. And I'm surprised and I'm most happy that the athletes are supporting me right now. Uh, right now, my next move is probably go back to courts and get another restraining order because there's no way the IAAF can come to the United States and tell an American athlete not to run an American event. What about today? The race is going to take place. Are you going to go to the starting line? Well, right now, the uh, IAAF has spoken. Uh, the meat promoter was instructed and threatened by the IAAF not to let me run. He had made his decision based on that, and I'm not going to um, be a sore thumb to this meet or the athletes right now. So you are officially withdrawing from the meet at the request of the meat promoter? No, I'm not withdrawing from the meet. I am going to warm up, and I'm going to get ready to get in the blocks, and they come and tell me at that time, but you cannot run, then I will do so. But until that time, I am getting ready to run. Thanks, Butch. We'll obviously cover this continuing story. The interesting fact is that the IAAF, the international organization in charge of track and field, has chosen to take on the world over this case. It's not simply a case of Butch Reynolds versus the IAAF anymore. They're saying, we're not going to listen to the U.S. courts. We're not going to listen to the track and field organization in the United States. We're not going to listen to many of the world's athletes who say, we want a testing system that works properly. We support Butch Reynolds. This story will continue to develop as long as the IAAF, which has no procedures for listening to athletes in the way that the IOC and TAC has, continues to operate in this manner. Despite the injunction from federal court stating that Butch Reynolds should compete, Bert Bonanno, the meet director, has withdrawn his invitation. TAC supports that decision. Like it or not, sports and politics, again, are intertwined. I think that if the IAAF made a ruling, and I think that ruling should stick. And as far as um, having to step up to the line and have all these other distractions, it, it, I think it's unfair to other athletes. I think it's unfair to the drug testing program. It's really hurting the sport because uh, they're making decisions and, and going back on them. They're not being decisive in, in what they want to say as far as letting him run and not letting him run. And I think that's, that's because this has a lot, because it has to do with drugs, it's hurting the sport. I believe that there were some improprieties. I've been in some of the most god-awful drug testing situations. Uh, Cuba was one of them. Uh, I came home and I told my wife, I said, you know, who knows what could happen after uh, after Cuba. I've been in Italy where the doctor says, just go in the room. This is IAAF testing. Just go in the room and bring us out a sample. You know, it's so different all across the world that the margin for error has to be there. The athletes from the U.S. and the 22 other nations involved in this competition are also getting involved, whether they want to or not, in the Butch Rundle incident. He is the world record holder, and his time is 43.29, and he is here on the track. But he won't be running. He seems to have gone along with the request, the ruling by Bert Bonanno, the meet director who we see on the right of the screen there, not to run. Bonanno pressured by the IAAF, accedes to that pressure. Reynolds will be a bystander during this race. The favorite has to be Danny Everett, an outstanding 400-meter runner, 
part of the gold medal winning team in 1988 that included Butch Reynolds in the 4x400 meters at the Seoul Olympics. And Butch Reynolds' brother Jeff Reynolds will be in lane two. Danny Everett, who is now favored, is in lane four. And we should also mention that the IWAF expanded by one nation this year up to 185 because South Africa was readmitted. They have some excellent distance runners, especially on the women's side. Zola Pedarse, we know her better as Zola Bud, qualified for their team earlier this week. And they have Alana Meyer, not so strong in the 400 meters. Always an event dominated by the United States, Danny Everett. The favorite here. He is in lane four, Danny Everett. The man outside of him in the all-white, Susumu Takano, was a big hit in Tokyo last year, making the final of this event, the 400 meters. And Marlon Cannon in lane six is out very quickly. And here comes Danny Everett down the back stretch, making up the stagger. Everett has Jenkins been, also running very well. Everett has been battling some sore Achilles tendons. There you see the, the top four that we've mentioned. Danny Everett now seeming to pull into the lead as they come to the straightaway. It's Danny Everett in lane four. Takano in lane five. And coming up strong in lane seven is Chip Jenkins, but it is going to be Danny Everett finishing first. Takano second and Jenkins third. Good controlled victory for Danny Everett. An outstanding 400 meter runner who was watching the 1984 Olympics with his brother Gregory said in 1988, I'll be there myself. He delivered on that promise with a bronze medal and a gold medal on the relay. And he has to be one of the favorites to medal this year as well. Everett sort of measuring the other runners and then taking the measure of the other runners in the home stretch. And Danny Everett wins the men's 400 meters. He is now with Carol Lewis. Carol. Danny, there's so much talk about Butch Reynolds and whether he was going to run the race, whether he wasn't going to run the race. Did that hamper you in preparing for today? No, I really concentrate only on myself, and I let Butch concentrate on himself. And I wanted to go out and put together a decent race for today. Well, I know that a lot of people saw the World Championships last year, and a lot of people were disappointed in the 4x400-meter relay. What are you guys going to do to bring that gold back to the United States and the world record? We're going to go there with the intentions of bringing it, bring it back. And hopefully, not only bringing it back, but bringing it back with a super time. And I think the Americans are definitely the strong people in the 4x4, and we're going to show it in 92. Well, congratulations today. Good job. Thank you. Well, Danny Everett won a gold medal in the 4x400 relay in the 88 Olympics. Had a bronze medal in the 400. He'd like to have a double gold performance in 92. We'll continue the Bruce Jenner Symantec Classic from San Jose, California in a moment on U.S. Olympic Gold.